Shall we continue? Yes, sure. Okay, first tell me, what are our basic requirements as living organisms? Food, air and water. Okay. We need air for breathing, mm -hmm. water for drinking and food for our working growth. Okay. We, just like all other living organisms, require food. The food provides us with energy to do work and nourishment for our growth and development. Absolutely correct. Now tell me, what are the sources of food for us? Um, we can obtain food from plant and hmm. animal sources. Okay. For example, grains, pulses, um, cereals, fruits, vegetables, herbs, spices, they are all obtained from plants. Okay. Whereas eggs, poultry, meats, fishes, milk are obtained from animal sources. Very good. Now, uh, you know that these other animals and plants are also living organisms and so they too require food. Can you now tell me, where do these other animals and plants get their food from? Well, some animals, they are termed as carnivores. They get their food from other animals. Animals like lions and tigers, wolves and foxes commonly hunt and eat deer, zebras, cattle, sheep, pigs, snakes eat rats, mice, uh, rabbits, frogs or eggs of other animals and birds. So do birds like eagles, owls and hawks. Some birds like pelicans and seagulls, kingfishers, eat fishes, worms and insects. Certain fishes also eat other small fishes, worms and insects. At the same time, there are many animals termed as herbivores, which eat only plants for food. For example, cattle, sheep, goats, horses, deer, Rhinosaurus, parrots, sparrows, geese, honeybees, they use only parts of plants such as leaves, flowers, fruits, twigs, etc. as their sources of food. On the other hand, plants do not depend on any other organisms or their food. Plants are termed as autotrophic as they synthesize food molecules within their green cells by using chemicals like carbon dioxide from air, water and minerals from soil and sunlight as source of energy. Correct. You do remember all the basics well. huh? So am I right when I say that plants are capable of utilizing abiotic components of the ecosystem to generate food for themselves and in turn food for all other organisms including carnivores, herbivores and omnivores? Yes, plants are the ultimate source of food for all living organisms. That is why in ecology we use the term producers for all green photosynthetic plants which are instrumental in harnessing the solar energy and making it available to all other organisms by becoming a source of food for rest of the biotic components of ecosystem. Um, plants are the producers in any ecosystem. But then what term do we use for other organisms of the biotic community? Organisms other than plants and photosynthetic microorganisms are termed as consumers. Herbivores, which directly depend on plants for their food, are termed as primary consumers. Carnivores, which use other animals as source of food, are termed as secondary and tertiary consumers. Tada, can you give me a few more examples for the same? Mm, yeah, let me think. Uh, okay, consider the following. Hmm? There is lake surrounding which there are few shrubs and grasses growing in field. There is a population of grasshoppers, frogs and snakes residing in this region. Now tell me, what would be the term used for all the grasses growing there? Since grasses are photosynthetic plants, they would be producers. Correct. The grasshoppers consume leaves of grasses and shrubs. So they are primary consumers in this ecosystem. But some grasshoppers themselves become a source of food for the frogs. So what would be the designation used for frogs? Secondary consumers and the snakes which eat the frogs for food will be tertiary consumers. Hey, see, you've got it. <laughs> Aren't microorganisms also part of all ecosystems? What would be termed for them? Apart from some microorganisms which are photosynthetic, most of the other microorganisms like bacteria and fungi use dead decaying complex organic matter as a source of food. 
while doing so they break down the complex organic matter into simple inorganic and elemental form which is released into soil water or air in the surroundings hence such saprophytic microorganisms which bring about decomposition of dead remains of plants and animals are termed as decomposers so all that was obtained from the abiotic components of the ecosystem is returned back to the environment isn't it exactly hence if you if you remember well when i began explaining about ecosystem i had used the phrase balanced self sufficient and self regulating organization to describe it there is constant cyclical flow of materials and energy from abiotic components of ecosystem to biotic components of the ecosystem and vice versa in other words whatever the living organisms obtain from the environment during their growth and development is returned back to the environment after their death would this also mean that there is interdependence between abiotic and biotic components of an ecosystem absolutely yes abiotic components influence the diversity and populations of biotic factors growing and developing in a particular ecosystem at the same time growth and development of population of one biotic factor influences abiotic factors available to other biotic components in the same ecosystem in this manner every biotic component or organism occupies a very unique position or status in the ecosystem playing a significant role in the functioning of that ecosystem we use the term niche for this ecological status of the organism isn't this an example of fine tuning and a beautiful balance achieved in nature now we have hit the bulls eye the steady flow and recycling of materials from abiotic to biotic components as well as dynamic balance and interdependence of both the components is crucial to the smooth functioning of all ecosystems since the last century under the increasing and indiscriminate interference of human activities such as overpopulation industrialization pollution etc different ecosystems are suffering qualitative degradation and fine balance in nature is collapsing this in turn is going to adversely affect the future generations of human beings yes indeed the changes that occur in ecosystems due to human interference are not visible immediately but over a long period of time the impact is felt in serious manner so it is important to study ecosystems and changes occurring in them to generate awareness today and ensure sustainable development for future thank you so much dada now i'm feeling very confident in participating for the elocution competition okay that's great all the best and do ask me if you need more help okay okay dada i'm going to go play with my friends now okay bye bye activity prepare the model of ecosystem find out what is importance of tigers and lions which are diminishing in our ecosystem in how many ways man has disturbed ecosystem what will happen if there are no butterflies what will happen if there are no jungles